So, in closing, let me give you two final pieces of advice. Just remember to have the right father or the right wife. <laughs> Both can come in very handy in the years ahead. Anyway, thank you all very much and uh, good luck to you all. Thank you. It's always a great pleasure to hear Arthur Jameson's views, however unorthodox they may be. I trust we all know that he has his tongue firmly in his cheek and that no one serves the legal profession better and more responsibly than he. And now I have great pleasure in introducing a noted attorney, constitutional authority, and uh, not incidentally, one of your professors in intentional torts and negligence, Simon Dietrich.
Is someone there? Arthur, is that you? Who's there? Who's there? I warn you, I'll call the police. Arthur, what on earth? I was just going to get myself a drink. Come and join me. You almost gave me a heart attack. I thought we were being robbed. Wrong term, darling. Not robbed, burgled. Robbery involves the threat of force or violence. There's a hair trigger on that, by the way, so unless you want to shoot me, I keep it pointed at the floor if I were you. Thank you. You're home early. I thought you'd be there till after midnight. Maybe you're looking at a mirage. What? There was an interesting trial last year in Florida where the entire defense rested on the worst alibi I've ever heard. Thank you. A man went to a country club dance, ducked out, murdered his business partner across town, and then went back to the dance again. Amazing thing was that no one noticed he was gone, not even his wife. Anyway, he was acquitted, and uh, he later told his attorney, it was Ted Meredith, you remember Ted? He always said you had beautiful hair. <laughs> anyway, he told Ted that uh, he was away for two hours. Isn't that incredible? Arthur, what are you talking about? You're not making any sense. Aren't I thought I was, sorry. Oh, Lord. Problem? I just called the police. I'd better get them before they... What is this? Clear evidence of a crime, but not quite enough yet. Don't touch that! Why not? Because it's a jimmy. And there's no reason for your fingerprints to be on it. What? Let me see. what you're doing. presumed to have happened here tonight is someone broke in, the door's been jimmied, and started taking our takeables. You heard a noise and called the police. I believe your phrase was someone's downstairs, a prowler. How did you know that? You took the gun from our nightstand drawer and came down here to investigate. The thief saw you, panicked, and there was a struggle. Then, unfortunately, Arthur. he shot you. For God's sake! a rubberized grip. 
It won't take legible prints, so that's covered. My cigar. I could have smoked it before I went out. My umbrella, I'll take that with me. Obviously, I'll have to accelerate things. The police take an average of 12 minutes to respond to a crime in progress. Call him. I've been here much too long. I have to cut it in half. Anything else? My drink. <laughs> he was there, Your Honor. The police found a glass, and the ice wasn't even melted yet. Idiot. left is to make sure that no one sees me leave and that should be that. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Your witness, Mr. Prosecutor. State your name and occupation, please. My name is Arthur Jameson. I practice law. Oh, come now, sir. You hardly do yourself justice. Isn't it a fact that you're one of the most prominent criminal attorneys in the state, if not the country? Guilty. Beg pardon? You make it difficult to be modest, Counselor. Since I'm under oath, I'm simply agreeing with you. Mr. Jameson. Would you be good enough to tell the jury of the events of the night of June 15th? Certainly. I had been invited to speak to a group of graduating law students. Each June, they throw a dinner. It's something of a tradition. And did you go to this dinner? I did. Where was it held? The students took a banquet room at a local hotel. How was your wife when you left her? I'm not sure I understand. Are you asking me about her mood, her character? I was referring to her physical state. And I suggest you say so. Your function is to clarify, not obscure. Mr. Jameson, with all due respect, I would appreciate a less patronizing attitude. And I would appreciate, with all due respect, questions of a more pertinent nature. I will certainly try to do better, sir. As for your wife, as for my wife, in answer to what I think you're asking me, her physical state was one of being alive. Go on. I drove to the hotel. We all sat down to dinner at 8. At 10, I made some brief remarks. I was followed by the other guest. When did the evening end? I hate to keep harping on the time. Perfectly understandable. I'd say 11.15. Then some of us went into the hotel bar for a nightcap. We've heard testimony that your wife called the police at 10.40. She reported the prowler in the house. When they arrived on the scene, they found that she had been... Forgive me, Mr. Jameson. I know this is difficult for you. They found she had been shot and killed. Yes. According to their report, you came home at, uh, 12.06. 12.06. .06. That's why. Most people would have said around midnight. You don't have most people on the stand, Counselor. Yes, I am very aware of that. In any event, when you were told what had happened, you reacted with shock and outrage. You must have loved her very much. Yes, I did. Of course. And that's why I'm puzzled, that in the weeks before her death, she told a number of her friends that she wanted a divorce. She also said she had assured herself of an enormous settlement. What does that suggest to you? It suggests that we had one of our rare fights and she overreacted. Yes, but this enormous settlement. Our examination of your financial records indicates that your wife had signed a prenuptial agreement. Why would she assume she'd get anything at all unless... Unless what? Unless, just as an example, she had reason to believe she had certain leverage. Objection, Your Honor. Clearly immaterial. Isn't it a fact that the bar associations of three states have questioned the conduct of some of your recent cases and that there have been rumors of sharp practices? Objection. Strike that from the record. I cite the prosecutor for sharp practices of his own. But if these rumors about your professional integrity were true, and if your wife was somehow in possession of damaging information, the objection has been sustained, Counselor. So it has. Withdraw the question. Would I be correct in assuming that you were happily married? You would. I'm sure we all envy you. And by the way, and no doubt off the subject, shortly before she died, your wife was seen to have a bruise, actually more like a cut, high on her cheek, near her left eye. The eye itself was blackened. 
Have you any idea how this happened? She stumbled in the bathroom and cut herself on the corner of a cabinet. An accident, then? That's correct, an accident. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I fail to see. Answer the question, please. I'm right-handed. If I were right-handed and were to strike someone with the court's indulgence, this is by way of a visual demonstration for the jury, I would bring up my hand thusly and hit the person I was facing on the left cheek. I see you wear no rings in your right hand. No. But you did, at least until recently. The skin at the base of your ring finger is whiter than the rest of your hand. And from this you conclude what? That I hit my wife? I leave it to the jury to form conclusions. Counselor, before you embarrass yourself, may I remind you that at the time of my wife's death, I was at the dinner surrounded by dozens of witnesses. And while you were there, she was killed by a thief. Exactly. There have been a number of crimes in the neighborhood. That's why we kept a gun. You spent the entire evening at this dinner. Yes, never left the room. Never left the room. I don't mean to contradict you, but we've heard testimony that you didn't return to your table after you spoke. A call of nature, counselor. So you went to the hotel restroom? Yes. Did you return to your table? I did not. I didn't want to interrupt Professor Dietrich, so I stood at the side of the room, where no one saw you. I have no idea whether anyone saw me or not. The guests were paying attention to the speaker, so I doubt it. However, I was there. But you can't prove that. No, nor can you prove otherwise. Mr. Jameson, according to your testimony, you began your, and I quote, brief remarks at 10. Your wife called the police at 10.40. What was to stop you from going home instead of the restroom? <laughs> Why would I do that, Counselor? To avoid tipping the attendant? The hotel is no more than a few miles from your house, a drive of perhaps 15 minutes at most. You're an encyclopedia of extraneous information. I wouldn't dare to be extraneous, sir. Not after your lecture on pertinence. So, let us assume that you did leave the hotel. That is a dangerous assumption. Dangerous for who, Mr. Jameson? Your wife? Objection! Fifteen minutes to drive to your house. Ten minutes to do whatever had to be done. Objection! Another fifteen minutes back to the hotel. You have been gone no more than 45 minutes. Your Honor, this is grandstanding. The prosecutor is accusing me of nothing more serious than the crime of convenient geography. Am I to be held responsible for the proximity of a hotel to my home? Yes, sir, you are. A young man named Bill Keith was the banquet chairman, and he is prepared to testify that you suggested the location for the dinner. He will also tell us that your acceptance was conditional upon the availability of nearby accommodations. Not very clever of me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the elements of a crime are means, motive, and opportunity. And if you consider Arthur Jameson in this light, you will see that he had the means, a burglary that never took place. He had the motive, his wife wanted a divorce and was demanding a large financial settlement. And he had the opportunity a dinner near his home that was intended to serve as an alibi. But it is a phantom alibi. And the so-called burglary outrages logic in every way. Here is a terrified woman who calls the police and reports an intruder. Does she then lock herself in her room and wait for them to arrive? No. Instead, she makes a totally irrational trip downstairs to confront the thief. Irrational, that is, unless there was no thief. And she knew the intruder. All right, it won't work. I'll have to do it another way. Absolutely. I have to plug up some of the holes. Kill her in the bedroom. The alibi. Very weak. It's an unacceptable risk. We'll have to come up with something better reasonably soon. I beg your pardon? What? Were you speaking to me? No. I was just clearing my throat. Oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has just turned on the no smoking sign. Would you please extinguish all cigarettes and make sure your seats are in an upright position in preparation for our landing in San Francisco.
Vanderchai could be a thousand miles away when she dies. Disadvantage. You'd be trading one albatross for another. Exit wife, enter hitman. Now, it has to be done without an accomplice. Yeah. Hmm. She died in a fire. Yeah. When she goes to sleep, I could rig something with a burning candle. How long would it take to burn down? I wonder, half an hour, perhaps? Mm, I could surround the candle with crumpled newspapers. Yeah. Your Honor, I begged my wife not to smoke in bed, but she wouldn't listen. The night of the fire, I was driving home quietly. And I heard sirens. Advantage? I'd have an alibi. Disadvantage? She doesn't smoke. Your Honor, do you think the jury would believe that my wife took up cigarettes on the day of her death? No? Hardly. Scratch the fire. What if? Arthur? In here? Someone with you? No, why? I thought I heard you talking. Just thinking out loud, occupational disease. You're home early? Yeah, the plane was ahead of schedule. The first for American aviation. I missed you. Mm -hmm. No kiss? Bad sign. You were going to think things over while I was away. Don't press me, Arthur. Oh, of course not. It's a very important decision. Take your time. It hasn't healed yet, has it? No. Very sorry about that, really. And I did miss you. Should we go upstairs? No. Sure. Arthur, you eliminated that part of our relationship a long time ago. Why are you suddenly trying to bring it back? Oh, do I have to have an ulterior motive? Always. I'd like a drink. Will you get me something? Maybe some sherry? How was Houston? Pretty much as expected. Two weeks of bourbon, boredom, and barbecue. Are you going to take the case? I don't know. It's a complicated defense. And I am not impressed by the home team. Still, considering the fee involved, I don't suppose I can turn it down. <laughs> asking me because you my dearest one have a consuming interest in my finances which are not what they should be at the moment i find it difficult to believe that you can't come up with a settlement oh i can but not now you get your money you'll just have to wait for it why do i get the impression you're stalling me darling when you blackmail someone first make sure he's liquid this isn't blackmail did i say blackmail sorry slip of the tongue all i want is reasonable maintenance yeah and this place and the weekend house. I'm accustomed to a certain way of life. That's the one thing you've given me. I want it to continue. And in a few years from now, what then? Will you come back and gouge me for more? No. Do I have your word in that? A woman who spent the past six months listening on my phone calls, checking my mail, and dropping by the office so she could read what was on my desk? It was necessary. Why, you knew I'd give you a divorce. Oh, no question. But what kind of a divorce, Arthur? You had me sign a prenuptial agreement when we were married. I wouldn't get anything, not even the... So you rooted around and dredged up some old rumors. Rumors? Tell me something, Arthur. What is the penalty for the misappropriation of a client's trust fund? That's grand theft, isn't it? Or the passing of information to a juror? Whatever you have on me, my dearest, or think you have, is nothing but conjecture. If you went to the district attorney or the state bar... They would welcome me with open arms. You're not exactly popular in legal circles, Arthur. But let's change the subject, shall we? The last time we had this conversation, you hit me.
Can you handle some praise? I'm not used to it, but I can try. You may have jumped to the wrong conclusion, but I'm very impressed by this new initiative. You weren't like this when I married you. No, I was much more pliable. It had its appeal. Oh, I'm sure it did. Who else would agree not to have children because they get in the way? And then there was the fact I was a judge's daughter. Traffic court judge. At the time, you didn't make those distinctions. A judge was a judge. You assumed he'd have connections. Incorrectly, as it turned out. No, anyway. I'm not as pliable anymore. After all this time, some of you has rubbed off. Good reason to stay together. What's the matter, Arthur? Will a divorce inconvenience you? All those women and no more Louise to use as an excuse for ending relationships. Ah, hmm? oh, is that why you're doing all this? Real or imagined other women? I'm doing it because I finally can. On my own terms. I see we've dropped the fiction that you're thinking things over. Would you give me some more ice? This is a bit warm. Changing the subject? I think we've exhausted it at the moment, don't you? Whatever you say. We're out. I'll get some. No, let me. I should start learning to do things for myself. Oh, by the way, that, um, that young law student, Bill Keith, he called again this morning. He wants to know if you're going to their dinner on the 15th. When he calls back, tell him I can't make it. I thought you wanted to go. Changed my mind. It wouldn't be productive. What if it wasn't murder? What if it was death by natural causes? Is that a viable approach? It depends. On what? On the circumstances. And your alibi. Why would I even need an alibi? Hmm? Suppose I arranged some kind of accident. Why wouldn't they take it at face value? You know why. The domestic situation. And there is also the fact that you struck her, which can be construed as a clear indication of your intent to do her bodily harm. All very prejudicial. Damn it. It always comes back to alibi. Alibi. From the Latin, meaning elsewhere. It's a lovely word, elsewhere. Wait a minute. Got something? Maybe. Are you going to the Sonoma house next weekend? I might, might. I just wondered. We don't seem to get much use out of it these days. We were in a more romantic frame of mind when we bought it. Yeah. Hey, what if, just for sake of argument, Louise drove up to the Sonoma house next Friday, I stay here, and that night, while I'm at a party or Working with my staff, witnesses coming out of my ears, she dies. Oh, hmm? Accidental fall, concussion, broken neck, whatever. Murder by remote control. Yeah, why not? Your Honor, my wife and I had a house in the wine country. It was nothing elaborate. Just a place we used to go to for weekends just to get away from the city. It's quite remote. Our nearest neighbors were about a mile or two away. On the weekend in question, Louise drove up to spend a few days. She said she needed a rest. It was a terrible tragedy, Your Honor. Sometime during the night, Louise must have thought she heard a noise. She had an unfortunate habit of taking sleeping pills. So when she awoke, she was probably groggy. She came downstairs and then decided to look in the basement. There's an old heater and perhaps the pipes were knocking. She was half asleep and half drugged. She obviously stumbled and fell. It wouldn't even come to trial. There'd be a local inquest, a matter of form. Then a verdict of accidental death. Agreed? Assuming there aren't any discrepancies. Oh, no, there wouldn't be. 
I'd go up to the house the day before, of course, and loosen the top step. Actually, the damn thing is loose anyway. Or I could uh, remove it entirely and then um, unscrew the light bulb. An old trick, but effective. She usually goes to bed about 10.30. Wherever I am, I'd call her. Um, hello? Hello, it's me. Did I wake you? Sorry. N that's all right. Listen, I'm out with a client and I need some papers in that old file in the basement. Sorry about this. Would you mind getting them for me? I need them tonight. What? what wh which ones? Top drawer first file. Thank you. Not very convincing. Doesn't have to be. Remember, she's just come out of a sound sleep. So she goes downstairs, leaving the phone off the hook. Hang up, darling. I'll call you back in a few minutes. They've just bought the check. She goes downstairs and opens the basement door. She tries the switch, but the light doesn't work. She knows there's a hanging bulb in the cellar. So she starts down in the darkness. And falls. And falls. Next day, I find the body and call the police after I've fixed the step naturally and screwed the bulb back in. Leaving fingerprints. Nothing wrong with that. It's my house. There's only one problem, and it's insurmountable. I know. The fall might not kill her. And if she found the loose step and realized why you called, there has to be a way around that. What if... You're doing it again. Doing what? Talking to yourself. Oh, sorry. I was working on a case. The one in Texas? No, a different one entirely. Much more important one. I was trying to get it out of the prosecutor. You still do that? All the time. I won't carry over from law school. Hold the trial in advance. Create opposing counsel and see if you can beat him. Did you? Did I what? Did you beat him? No, not yet. No, he's uh, tough. But uh, I think I'm making progress. You expecting some? No. I'll get it. No Japanese gardens? This is Arthur Jameson. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Really, it's perfectly all right. It's oh, no trouble at all. Oh, this is really very nice. I mean, I feel so... I'd like a corner table for two at eight o'clock this evening. Thank you. I just bought these yesterday, and now the strap breaks. I mean, you'd think when you pay that kind of money. <laughs> oh, this is my husband. Arthur, this is Miss Willis. How do you do? Oh, and it's Jackie. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this. <laughs> Miss Willis has a problem. So it seems. Oh, no, not my sandal. It's your neighbor's. Um. Do you mind if I sit down? I feel kind of foolish standing here on one foot. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't get settled. I mean, I'm only going to stay a minute. You mentioned something about our neighbors. The Starks. The Starks are in your room. I know. Maybe I'll just um, take the other one off. Is that all right? <laughs> of course. Uh, um. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a key to their front door, would you? I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm not going to rob them or anything. <laughs> um, Vivian, uh, Mrs. Stark is a friend of mine, and I'm just doing her a favor. I'm, I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, I'm supposed to water the plants. I mean, I don't do it professionally, but, you know, I told them I'd come by once a week and help them out. They have all these ferns and things, and those little Japanese um, shrubs. The trouble is, I can't get in. Well, didn't they give you a key? <sighs> That's the problem. I lost it. I, I know I had it this morning. I know I did. I, uh, I took it down from my bulletin board. See, I keep everything packed to the bulletin board in my kitchen. But when I got to the front door, it was missing. I just... Anyway, that's why I came over. I thought maybe the Starks had given you an extra key. No, I'm afraid not. You know, we really don't know them very well. Have you tried their other neighbors? I rang the bell, but nobody answered. Oh, I'm 
I'm sorry. I wish we could help you. Thanks anyway. It's not my day. Don't the Starks have a daughter? I don't know, do they? I seem to remember them giving me a number in case of an emergency. Maybe she has a key. Huh. Oh, does she live here in the city? Somewhere in North Beach. Uh, Louise, see if the number's in my address book. It should be upstairs in the bedroom. I'll get Miss Willis, isn't it? A drink? Oh, I don't want to put you people in any more trouble. No. Not at all. Let's see if we have it. Oh, I really appreciate this. I'd hate the Starks to come home to a house full of dead plants. I was worried. You kept calling that hotel in Houston, but they wouldn't put me through. I told you I'd be busy. Well, I thought something had happened. I didn't hear from you for a week. Then you wouldn't let me meet your plane. Don't you ever listen? Hmm? I said I'd call you when I got back. I'm sorry. How the hell did you know about the Starks? From you. Don't you remember? Hmm? We were having drinks at that place near your office, and they walked in, and you kind of hunched down in your seat. Anyway, you told me they lived next door and that they were leaving for Europe. Huh. Well, I had to say something. I mean, I was hoping your wife wouldn't be home, but when she opened the door... You weren't hoping she wouldn't be home. You just wanted to see what she looked like. That's why you came here. That's not true. Honestly. I mean, I'm curious about her, sure. But the real reason is I was worried. I had this weird feeling. Ah! Well, I did. Jackie, I was in Texas. In spite of what you may have heard, it is not a foreign country. Okay. Yeah? I can't find your address book. Ah, uh, try the front bedroom near the telephone. All right. Well, I guess you don't want me to stay for a drink. Right, I don't want you to stay for a drink. Can you come over tonight? Come on, use your head. I've just got back. And I want you out of here before she comes downstairs. It's funny. I always wondered what this place would look like. It's nice. I'm glad you approve. Hey, wait. What? Show me. Come on, hurry up. It's not even close. It's hard. You were supposed to practice. You had two weeks. Well, I'll get better. I've done some good ones. That is. You know how important it is. Well, I guess I better go. Will you call me? Yes. Oops. You're not still angry? No. Where did Miss Phillips go? Hey, uh, homeward bound. She suddenly remembered where she put the key when hopping away in my foot. <laughs> well, it's just as well. The number wasn't in your phone book. No, it's probably still at the office. <laughs> a strange sort of a person to be a friend of by Starks. Yeah. Where was it, by the way? Where was one? Key. Oh, she didn't say. Probably it's still on the bulletin board under recipe for meatloaf. Uh, Louise? Um, what time is it? I, uh, don't remember if I reset my watch on the plane and Houston is two hours later. Well, it's almost 7.30, I think. I was about to make some dinner. Have you eaten? 
Uh, no, I'm not hungry, and I suppose I should unpack. Why don't I make you some coffee? Fine. What if she died in an accident in her car? Let me think about that, Your Honor. I'll get back to you. It's me. No, I just got in from the airport. Are you in a sushi mood? Huh. Huh. All right, I'll meet you at the restaurant in half an hour. I love you too. Weekend house is a rather steep driveway. Suppose she went shopping and she put the groceries in the trunk of her car. When she came home, she parked in front of the garage. Go on. Somehow, I don't know how it happened, Your Honor, the gear must have slipped. She hadn't set the emergency brake, so the car rolled backwards. It knocked her down. One of the wheels crushed her skull. Not very good. Why isn't it? Because any forensic pathologist would discover a blow on her head that wouldn't correspond to the tread marks on the tire. And there would be a blow. She'd have to be unconscious before you backed the car over her. It's circumstantial. Under the law, I don't have to be innocent, only not guilty. Yes, but you're not comfortable with it. No, I suppose not. Here's your coffee, if you'd like anything else. Sorry, I just remembered I have to go out. Business meeting. At uh, this hour? They're leaving town in the morning. It's inconvenient, but I don't have much of a choice. But you haven't even unpacked. I'll do it later. Well, at least have some coffee. No time. Uh, don't wait up for me. I'm not sure when I'll be back. Ah, oh, that sounds familiar. Better start encouraging me. I'm in business for the two of us now. Arthur? What the hell? Come back upstairs. Are you out of your mind? Do as I say. Into the bedroom. Give me that thing. When a gun is cocked, it can fire by accident. Why didn't you lower the muzzle or at least aim to the side? Are you giving me instructions? trying to avoid any miscalculations. You've never touched a gun in your life. I've been practicing. Oh? Into the bedroom. I think it would be much simpler for both of us if you'd uh, sit down. You're nervous. Obviously. And the question is, if I take a few steps toward you, would you pull the trigger? Yes! Then I suppose I should sit down. Better? Much better. Now, at some point, I'd like to know what the hell is going on here. Have you found a way yet? A way? To kill me. Or is it still on the drawing board? So that's what this is all about. A misplaced notion of self-defense. Why don't you drink your coffee and we'll discuss it? Why on earth would I want to kill you? Where shall we start? You have your faults, but paranoia was never one of them. Maybe you should let me recommend a good psychiatrist. It's getting cold.
sweet, extra sugar, hiding the taste of what? Mm, no, who's being paranoid? Mm. Can't be poison. You don't poison a man if you're going to shoot him. What is it, Louise? Half a bottle of your sleeping pills? I put too much sugar in it. Drink it. Sorry. Arthur, I'm warning Damn it! Be careful with that thing. Jackie! What happened? He was going to go out. I had to keep him here. What the hell is this? You two know each other? Well, we've accomplished something. He's surprised. Why shouldn't we know each other? We have a great deal in common. Jackie, what's this all about? Don't badger her, Arthur. This isn't a cross-examination. How much have you told her? Pretty much everything, I guess. And all very interesting. Do you still think I need a psychiatrist? <laughs> Only if you believe her. Miss Willis has a few problems with the truth. I'm sure she told you an elaborate invention. Arthur, stop it. It won't work. No, I suppose not. Had to try, though. Well, aren't you going to enlighten me? About what? Why, the where and the when. You might start by telling me how you two met. What difference does that make? Miss Willis approached me, that's all. Approached you? Interesting phrase. From the front, from the side, or did she leave a message in a bottle? You're just trying to stall us. Of course I am. But since you're always complaining that I never listened to you, I thought you might enjoy my undivided attention. Actually, I was following her. Oh? Trouble is, I wasn't very good at it. She spotted me. Very clever of you. Uh, I wasn't clever at all. She stood out like a sore thumb. Go on. It was about two weeks ago. You were in Texas, and I felt trapped in the house. So I decided on my usual therapy, shopping. like that. You almost gave me a heart attack. If you don't stop following me, I will talk to a policeman. Do you understand? Look, it's all right. Really. I just wanted to talk to you. There are more conventional ways to arrange a conversation. I know. I should have called, but I wasn't sure you'd see me. Uh, so I figured if I followed you around, maybe I'd work up the nerve. It's about Arthur. Miss uh, Willis. Jackie Willis. Miss Willis, I'm, I'm rather tired. Perhaps if you call me tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be too late. I mean, if I don't get this off my chest right now, I never will. Oh, that's a provocative statement. But what off your chest? Look, could we sit down somewhere? I need a diet soda. I really do. Hmm. Lucky they invented this stuff. If I drank the regular, I'd blow up like a balloon. You seem to have it under control. I've been jogging a lot. Keeps me nice and firm, you know? Do you jog? No. That's right. You go to one of those exercise classes, right? 
aerobics, isn't it? What? Yeah, I used to work in a gym. I mean, I was only secretary, but you pick up a lot just being there. How do you know I went to an exercise class? Arthur told me. I'll be right back. I asked for another one. I don't know why. I'm really thirsty today. Miss Willis. Mm. Jackie. Miss Willis, you said you knew my husband. I assume that you're not a client. Oh, I couldn't afford him. Then suppose you tell me what this is all about. Well, it's kind of embarrassing. At least part of it is. I think once I get over that, I think you'll be very interested. I've, um, I've been dating Arthur for eight months. I see. Actually, I guess you could say I'm his mistress. You probably want some proof. That won't be necessary. No, it's important that you believe me. Um, he left his cigar case at my apartment last week. It's in here somewhere. Oh, isn't that the dumbest thing? I... I changed purses. It's in my other bag. I'm all screwed up today. Miss Willis. He did leave it, though. It's got his initials on it. A-T-J. The T is for Thomas. Miss Willis, I accept your credentials. But if it's... If it's money that you want... Really, Mrs. Jameson, it's nothing like that at all. I'm just trying to save your life. I wasn't aware that my life was in danger. Bear with me, okay? Did you by any chance hire a private detective to check up on me and Arthur? Oh, Miss Willis, this, this may come as a rude awakening. But Arthur has left a trail of cigar cases in bedrooms all over town. If I needed proof of infidelity at this late date, I'd uh, stick a pin in the telephone book. Well. He said you'd had a detective following us for months. He said you got the final report last week and you put it in a safe deposit box. He was lying to you. There's no detective. There never was. But you do have a safe deposit box. Yes. And there's an envelope inside, right? I'm afraid that's none of your business. Uh, Mrs. Jameson, you got to tell me what's in that envelope. See, thing is, he wants me to steal it. How did you get a sample of my handwriting? Arthur gave me some of your canceled checks before he left for Texas. And by the time he gets back, I'm supposed to be an expert. It seems you already are. Oh, I had it down pat the first day. But I'm not going to tell him that. Why not? Because the minute he knows I can sign your name, he's going to make me get him that envelope. Let me see if I understand this. He wants you to go to the bank, as if you were me, and open my safe deposit box? Uh-huh. I only have to fool the person who signs me in, as long as I can write your name. And I have the key to your box. But you don't have the key. He'll give it to me. He says you keep it in your jewelry case. Damn him. Anyway, he said that envelope is where you keep all the stuff from your private detective. What? Oh, yes, yes, the little man who wasn't there. He told me that as long as you have those records, you can take him to the cleaners. But the minute I get him that envelope, he's going to leave you and... And what? Well, he promised me we'd get married. <laughs> oh, congratulations. I wanted to believe him, but what good would it do if I got him that envelope? I mean... Private detective agencies keep records in triplicate. Now, how do you know that? I used to work for one. Only a couple of weeks, but, I mean, they had me making copies of everything. I don't see what this has to do with my life being in danger. You're talking about stealing things. Oh, no. I'm talking about murder. Unless I'm wrong, as soon as he gets that envelope, he's going to kill you. Do you know what was in the envelope? It was a letter to the district attorney. 
Isn't that weird? I thought it was something like that. Last week, I told Arthur I wanted a divorce and the terms of a settlement. He was amused until he found out how much I knew about the way he runs his business. What did he say? <laughs> he didn't say anything. He just did this. He hit you? After that, I thought it was only wise to take precautions. So I wrote a letter to the district attorney, everything I knew. And I said that in the event of my death, they should assume that Arthur killed me to keep me quiet. Wow. I addressed the envelope to my lawyer, rented a safe deposit box. Then I told Arthur. So that was your ace in the hole, huh? Yes. In the event of my death, the box will be sealed and the letter sent to my lawyer. Only it's not much good if it isn't there. Well, if he gets it back, I can always write another one. Yeah, but then why steal it in the first place? Mrs. Jameson, face it. There's no reason to get rid of that letter unless he gets rid of you, too. I see your point. See, the more I thought about it, the more it worried me. That's why I followed you. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have. No, it's, it's good that you did. I'm, I'm very grateful. Well, at least you have some time. He still has to figure out a way to kill you. And that's not going to be easy. I mean, he's the first person they'd suspect. <laughs> I have every confidence in him. I'll come up with something. There is a way to stop him. How? Oh. You could tell him we talked. And then I might go to the police. That'll throw him a curve. Miss Willis, you're a very intelligent woman. Eh, you just caught me on a good day. Well, won't he be furious with you for telling me? Doesn't really matter. We're pretty much finished anyway. Ah. Uh, He's got someone else. Someone else? In addition to you? He thinks I don't know. Been seeing her for a couple of months. Oh, is she? Her name's Gail. She runs an art gallery over on Sutton Street. She's from Canada. You're very well informed. I did some checking. And I followed him a few times. It's pretty serious. <laughs> did I say something funny? Well, not really. It's just that Arthur is the only man I know who would cheat on his mistress. But I suppose you don't find that amusing. No. I kind of liked him. They all do. Just as a matter of curiosity, where did you two meet? At his office. I used to work there. Well, I thought you worked at a gym. Or was it a detective agency? Oh, I worked just about everywhere. Oh, didn't I explain? See, I'm with this agency. And they send me out on temporary jobs. Oh, one of Arthur's secretaries had an operation, so I replaced her. How convenient for Arthur. Usually he has to go out looking. He's had a lot of ladies, huh? Yes. You know something? I mean, this is really ridiculous. But, uh, well, it'd be better for everybody if he was dead. <laughs> that goes without saying. Unfortunately, he's in perfect health. No, I mean it. I believe you do. You'd sure be better off. You'd get everything. Plus the insurance. What is it, a $500,000 policy? How do you know that? I must have run across it in his files. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Miss Willis. I'm not sure what you're suggesting. Am I suggesting something? Let me do that. But Arthur is very much alive, and if he does die, he better do it at home with a doctor at his bedside. Why? Well, because as you so carefully pointed out, I have the most to gain by his dying. Well, I guess you'd need an alibi. <laughs> at the very least. Suppose I could give you one. And suppose I could tell you how to do it. Do what? What we're talking about. Kill Arthur. Miss Willis. I mean, not that we actually go through with it or anything. I mean, this is all just kind of a game, isn't it? Oh, yes, of course. How would you get out of it? Pardon? Well, you said you wanted to help. I assume you'd want something in return. 
You mean besides satisfaction? Besides satisfaction. Same as you, I guess. Money. How much money? You could work something out. You'd have so much you wouldn't even know it was missing. Just for the sake of argument. You understand all this is hypothetical. Oh, sure. How could I possibly pay you? I couldn't very well write a check. And if I withdrew a large sum of cash... Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Look, I can tell you at least five ways to launder money. Most people don't know how easy it is. But you do. Uh-huh. I used to work in a bank. Hey, listen. I've taken up enough of your time. It was really nice meeting you. Oh, wait a minute. Hello? Arthur? Oh, no, no. I'm just uh, sitting here. Reading. Yes, where are you? The hotel? Uh, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, still, it's still swollen, but it's going down. Mm -hmm. it, yes, I got the flowers. Am I in a forgiving frame of mind? Well, I really don't think that's something we should talk about long distance. Is someone there with you? I thought I heard another voice. Ah, I see. Well, it's a bit late in the day for maid service, hmm? No, I'm not being sarcastic. Arthur, I hate to cut you off, but I am exhausted. Could you call me back tomorrow? You love me? No, no, it's just a peculiar thing to say under the circumstances. Of course I believe you. Why shouldn't I? Sit down, Miss Willis. Please. We talked until... Midnight. It's a very useful conversation. No doubt. All right. Let's see what we have here. Wife, mistress, and a loaded gun. Not to mention a loaded cup of coffee. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. I come home from a business trip and the women in my life are planning to kill me. It boggles the mind. You really think it's wise to laugh at someone with a gun? Why shouldn't I? We both know you're not going to use it. Your Honor, there was the husband shot through the heart. His wife, and incidentally his sole beneficiary, insisted she was elsewhere at the time. Unfortunately, when the police gave her a standard neutron activation test, they found clear traces of barium and antimony on her right hand, proving conclusively that she had fired a weapon. There's a pair of rubber gloves in the kitchen. Under the sink near the liquid detergent. Well, until you're wearing that glove, wouldn't you say you were vulnerable? Arthur, I'm perfectly willing to shoot you. And I'll take my chances with the police. Is that clear? Very clear. May the condemned man have a drink, or do I have to die in the bedroom? No. We can go downstairs. Be very careful. Take your coffee. I hope you and Jackie have come up with something foolproof. I wouldn't want you to make any mistakes. We won't. I don't want to be negative, but murdering a spouse has its difficulties. Take my word for it. We were just talking about perfect crimes. I haven't told him anything. No, she's been very discreet. Although there's really no point in keeping the victim in the dark, is there? Hmm? Unless you're afraid I might poke a few holes in your game plan. Don't flatter yourself. No loose ends. The classic mistake of the amateur is overconfidence. We know what we're doing. Good, then share it with me. People pay good money for my advice. Why not take advantage of it? Let's tell him. I mean, why shouldn't we? We got nothing to lose. Listen to her, Louise. She's making sense.
Now, first things first. How am I supposed to die? You're going to take your own life. A suicide? Interesting. An overdose of barbiturates? No. Well, that's a relief. And it wouldn't help your case. Men prefer carbon monoxide or... Uh... Oh, I see. I'm going to shoot myself. And why would I want to do that? Because you can't face the end of your career. I thought it was in full flower. It was, until your mistress came over here. Ah, yes, Jackie's visit. The lost key and the suffering plans. I assume there's a reason for your comings and goings. Oh, sure. I had to be seen by the cab drivers. Ah. My story's going to be, when I found out about your new lady, I decided to get even. Go on. This is fascinating. I took a cab over here and I kind of struck up a conversation with the driver. I said I was going to tell you off in front of your wife. He thought it was pretty funny. You were only here a few minutes. The police will want to know what happened. There was a confrontation. Miss Willis informed me that you two had had an affair. Naturally, I was shocked. Naturally. I had no idea you'd been unfaithful to me. We started shouting and Miss Willis ran out. I got another cab and went home. I was crying, so the driver should remember me. And it was after our argument. Is that when I shoot myself? Not quite. If I'm here, I don't have an alibi. So you walked out on me? As I wandered around for a while, I realized I was in Miss Willis's neighborhood. So on a sudden impulse, I went to her apartment. Well, she welcomed you with open arms, and the two of you talked about how worthless I am. But that still doesn't explain why I put the gun to my head. I called you. Just about now, I said we were finished. More a cause for celebration than suicide. I also told you I was going to the district attorney. I put myself completely at his disposal. And that, I suppose, pushed me over the edge. I think the police will accept a man killing himself to avoid disbarment in criminal prosecution. Where were you when the fatal shot was fired? I was with Miss Willis. We were together till late tonight. But you could have killed me before you went to her apartment. But I didn't. She'll swear she heard me talking to you on the phone. You were very much alive. You were pleading, and your voice was quite loud. I hope you're being well paid, Jackie. Accessory to murder, what's the going rate these days? It's enough. How do you know you'll get your money? Once I'm dead, Louise might not want to spread it around. I trust her. A sisterhood. That's very touching. Which one of you came up with this airtight plan, by the way? Or was it a joint effort? Jackie did. Really? I never knew you had such a lethal imagination. We're wasting time. On the contrary, it's time well spent. Because I recommend that you cut your losses and settle out of court. If this case ever came to trial, I don't think even I could get you off. It won't come to trial. Oh, but it will, and any halfway decent prosecutor would tear you apart in five minutes. That's ridiculous. What are you doing? Sit down. What? Sit down! If you want to see the epic nature of your miscalculations, you'll do as I say. And keep that pointed away from my midsection, because the more you hear, the less likely you'll be to shoot. Thank you. Now, listen very carefully. You're in the courtroom. This is day one of the trial. We've heard Miss Willis's testimony, and now you're on the witness stand. This is the most absurd thing. Oh, let him, let him go on. Maybe we'll learn something. Jackie, if I'd seen the side of your character, I might not have traded you in. Now, Mrs. Jameson, cast your mind back to the day of your husband's suicide and remember that you're under oath. You've testified that you were distressed to hear of his affair with Miss Willis. Your Honor, the witness is not responsive. Oh, all right. Yes, I was. Is that what you want? Darling, you're not playing the game. Never mind what I want. Just tell the truth. Were you or were you not upset? the news of your husband's infidelity. I was. 
But we've heard testimony from several of your close friends that you've known of his philanderings for years. Why did Miss Willis come as such a surprise to you? Well, it wasn't that I was surprised. It's just that uh, after all the others, she was the last straw. Good. Would you say that your late husband was an egotist? Definitely. Full of himself, eager to share his misguided sense of his own importance with the world? Absolutely. Then why didn't he leave a note? What a note? A suicide note. Egotists are notorious for self-justification, even posthumously. You would get an objection there. My lawyer would object. Of course he would. My remarks would be struck from the record, but not from the minds of the jury. Now, Mrs. Jameson, when you called your husband and made your threats, did he know where you were? Yes, I told him I was at Miss Willis's apartment. Why didn't he call you back? Well, he may have. I took the phone off the hook. So, the poor man, unable to reach you and exercise his famous powers of persuasion, blew his brains out. That's quite a rush to oblivion. I wonder if the jury will accept his incredible hurry to put a gun to his head. But let's take a closer look at the day of the suicide. You've testified that after Miss Willis dropped her bombshell, she left, and you and your husband had a terrible argument. What happened next? I've already told you. I was hysterical. I had to get out of there. So you walked the streets, and if I'm quoting you correctly, on an impulse, you went to Miss Willis's apartment. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. How did you know her address? What? It's a simple question, Mrs. Jameson. How did you know where she lived? Presumably, you'd never met her before. Well, she, she, she'd had forgotten her purse, you see. And I was uh, obviously curious about it, so I looked in the wallet, and it was her address. On the driver's license? I think so. No. Jackie's about to tell you that she doesn't drive. Well, then it wasn't on her license. It was, uh, it was her credit card. Major credit cards don't carry home addresses. You saw a health insurance card. They do. No coaching from the sidelines. Miss Willis has testified that she took a taxi back to her apartment. Well, I'm sure that's the truth. Tell me something. How did she pay for the cab? With money. But you said she left a purse behind. Now, unless she carries money in her broken sandal, how did she pay for the taxi? And since her door key was obviously in her purse, how did she get into her apartment? Well, maybe I did, did, didn't uh, see the address in her purse. Um, the phone book! Looking up numbers in the midst of your hysteria, I suggest you didn't see her address at all. I suggest you know it to begin with. No! I further suggest that the two of you murdered your husband. He wasn't murdered. He committed suicide. Because of your phone call? Yes, because of my phone call. But that's impossible. How could he take a call if he wasn't home? He was home! We shall introduce testimony from a Miss Gail Stafford, a lovely young woman from Vancouver. That your husband telephoned her and said he was meeting her for dinner. Why didn't he? Why did he conveniently wait for you to visit Miss Willis? You're lying. Call the Japanese gardens. You'll see that I have a reservation for two at eight o'clock. At this very moment, Miss Stafford is wondering where I am. They're a hungry breed, the Canadians. She's probably starving to death. What'll they do? Shall we call the restaurant? Is the witness dismissing herself? I haven't even started. You told me this would work. How did I know he was going out? Don't squabble, ladies, and be grateful for that. Save your skins. What do you mean? It kept me from drinking your cup of counterfeit coffee. Exhibit A, Your Honor. <coughs> Didn't you know there'd be an autopsy? Not unless the wife requests it. Wrong. Autopsies can be performed at the discretion of the medical examiner. Given my notoriety, he'd cut me open as soon as he got his hands on me. He'd find a bullet in my skull and barbiturates in my stomach, and he'd be very confused. Why would a suicide take sleeping pills before he shoots himself? I guess we blew it. I guess you did. Damn sleeping pills. Don't be too hard on yourself. You needed them. I had to be unconscious so you could put the gun in my hand and press it against my head. But I'm sure you can see that it's useless now. 
Might as well put that down. Don't come any closer. Now what? You'll shoot me? Strange kind of suicide. A man fires a gun at himself from three feet away. If you take one more step. Put it down, Louise. You've lost. No. Danny, give it to me! Now give me that thing. Friend of yours? Or maybe it's Miss Stafford. When you stand them up, they get aggressive. Don't answer it. Then put down the gun. Quid pro quo. Arthur. Fire away and explain how I shoot myself in the back. Mrs. Jameson, do what he says. We'll never know, will we? So, what happens now? I keep my dinner date. And since you two won't be needing each other any longer, I suggest you part company. Oh, it's not so bad. Maybe this didn't work out, but at least you didn't lose anything. Correction. She's lost everything. Tomorrow, I want you to get that letter from your safe deposit box. You bring it home, and I'll watch you burn it. Now, why would I do a foolish thing like that? For the same reason that you'd be flexible about a divorce. You'll have your freedom, with my blessings, but don't expect any fringe benefits. Get out of here, Arthur. Leave me alone. Jackie, would you take a look at the tape recorder? What? Look at it closely. Tell my wife what you see. It's running. He's been recording us. What? I turned it on when I went to get a drink. Unfortunately, I've lost Prokofiev for six, but I think it's a worthwhile tray. Turn it off. You're a little late, aren't you? The microphone is built in, so I'm sure it's picked up everything. Thank you. Exhibit B, Your Honor. Clear evidence of attempted murder. With an unforgiving judge, that's nine years imprisonment. I'd say that cancels out your leverage. If you get the urge to go to the district attorney, just remember, I can blame your theme and variations on killing a husband. No, none of, none of this is admissible in court. Sorry. A recording is admissible as long as one party to the conversation knows it's being made. In this case, me. I won't stand for this. I'm afraid you'll have to. Well, I'm late. If you'll both excuse me. I want that tape. Stop mastering. You can't afford to shoot and you know it. Give it to me. Have I just about enough of you? Put that damn thing away. Don't come near me. Then don't threaten unless you have the car. No! Damn you! Put it down! Get enough of you. Oh. Oh. Is she dead? Oh, brother. Quiet, let me think. All right. I'm going to call the police, but first, I want to go over our story. What story? If you want a drink, you should have something to settle you down. I don't want a drink. What story? The trick is to keep it as close to the truth as possible. Sit down. Sit down. <gasps> you were angry with me because I jilted you. Then you came over here to embarrass me in front of my wife. She and I had a violent argument. She got the gun, threatened me. I tried to take it away from her. And it went off. You saw the whole thing. 
I don't want to talk to the police. I just want to go home. Be ridiculous. I need you. Can't make a case of self-defense without a witness. You don't need a witness. Just play him the tape. The tape is useless. What? There's nothing on this but surface noise. Hardly admissible evidence. But the machine was running. The microphone was broken, but not recording. Never got around to having it fixed. You were bluffing. Of course I was bluffing. That's how I earned my living. I'm going to have to do a hell of a lot more than the next half hour. Arthur, you can call the police if you want to, but I'm not going to be here when they come. Haven't you been listening? I said I needed you. I can't. How much? Huh? For the whole package, including your sworn testimony. Not as simple as that. Jack, he... As of this moment, you're out in the cold. All this planning and nothing to show for it. I'll give whatever Louise was paying. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't want you to hear that you're sorry. I want to hear that you'll help me. How can I help you if I'm at my apartment? Huh? The cab driver knows I left here over an hour ago. I made a big point of the time with him. That's a problem. So we can find a way around that. How are you going to find a way around your wife's letter? I mean, when somebody dies, they open the safe deposit box, right? That's the law. Yes, but... Well, as soon as they read her letter, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, what'd she say? If anything happens to her, they should put the blame on you? That's exactly why I need your testimony. You swear it was an accident. It was an accident. Arthur, you're always telling me to use my head. Well, I'm using it. They never believe me in a million years. I'm your mistress. You've got to try. I just can't take the chance. <laughs> I mean, a guy shoots his wife and his girlfriend says it was an accident? <laughs> I'd be lucky if they didn't go after me for perjury. Will you listen? Like I said, I'm really sorry. But you're smart. You'll come up with something. I'll implicate you. I'll tell them that you wanted to kill me. And I'll say you're lying. Goodbye, Arthur. Jackie! It's funny. If I could help you, I wonder if I would. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there can be no reasonable doubt that Arthur Jameson did willfully and with premeditation murder his wife in cold blood. We've heard that Louise Jameson was in possession of information detrimental to her husband's career. And we have shown that on the afternoon of her death, she was confronted by his mistress, who was a catalyst for a violent argument. After Miss Willis left the scene, the deceased, hurt and lashing out in anger, threatened to expose her husband to the authorities. Knowing his very survival was at stake, and with full malice, he shot and killed her. It was an accident! The defendant has alleged that the shooting was accidental, the result of an elaborate murder plot with himself as the intended victim. But, as reasonable men and women, I'm sure you recognize his story for what it is, the desperate fabrication of a guilty man. The police found sleeping pills in my coffee put there by himself to substantiate his story. Why would I kill my wife? Why, if I knew she had incriminating evidence in her safe deposit box? We only have his word that he did know. She would have told me it was her protection. She rented the box the day before he went to Texas, and he killed her the day he got home. She never had the chance. It was self-defense. I have a witness. What witness, sir? She's denied it under oath. Ladies and gentlemen, a wife in writing says her husband wants her dead, and suddenly she is dead, at the hand of the very man she accused. If you had no other evidence, and you do, this fact alone is devastating. No doubt, that after your deliberations, you will bring back a verdict of guilty of murder in the first degree. So say you all. So say we are. The prisoner 
is remanded to the custody of the Department of Correction, sentencing to be scheduled for a later date. Court is adjourned. It would probably serve me right. Not that either one of them would seriously consider murdering me. Although Lord knows what would happen if they met each other. <laughs> if they knew about Gail. I just got in. <laughs> Why didn't I pick you up tonight? At about eight. See you then. Arthur. Hello, darling. I didn't expect you for another hour. The plane was early. You look marvelous. You've changed your hair. From what? From the way I've been imagining it. I see that's healing nicely. I can't tell you how sorry I am about that, really. It's all I could think about while I was away. Would you like a drink? Not now. to get something. When you come back, we've got things to talk about. What if she committed suicide? Not a bad idea. Your Honor, my wife had been depressed over our marital difficulties and the day I got back from a business trip, the poor woman had taken a gun from my bedroom drawer. Worth considering has its possibilities. Louise, just going upstairs to unpack. Problem, the same damn problem is that I have to be away from you when it happens. If I could. Hello. Miss Willis, it's done. Already? But his plane was early. And everything's fine. You sure? To be honest, I thought it would be much more difficult. And he's really, uh... Yes. I will finish up here and I'll be right over. Just remember the time. I have been with you for the past two hours. <laughs> 